Okay, the next step is to assemble the power distribution board. I have this 5 volt 600 milliamp step down Polulu. Um, it's a voltage regulator. It'll take the 12 volt from your battery, convert it back to 5 volt, and then I can solder that whole assembly onto this power distribution board so as to send the um, flight controller the 5 volts that it needs to be powered. Okay, this comes with two sets of pin headers. One is angled, one is straight. I'm going to use the straight ones because I want it to seat perfectly in that board. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the top, I'm going to, so I've got, if we look closely, we can see that there's a V out, ground, and V in. So voltage out, voltage in, and ground. I've got plus ground 5 volt, so 5 volt is the voltage out that corresponds to the voltage out here. So if I flip this over, you can see that in ground 5 volt matches up with in ground 5 volt, or in ground 5 volt. So I'm going to move it over this way one. So I only need three pin headers here. So to separate pin headers, because I only need three, they're pretty brittle, so you could use scissors. I've got some tin snips here. Boom. Now it's ready to be soldered on. All right, so we're going to solder this up. Got, I'm going to put the, so I've got, I need the five volt VN and ground. So I'm going to stick it in there just like that and set it up so that it's balanced. And I'm just going to hit the first one here. Okay, so what's... Ah, it's not getting... I'm not getting enough heat onto the pad. There we go. Okay, so now you can see that it's bent. But I've only done one on purpose. So I can just heat this up again. Get it warm. And just bend it back in place a little bit until I get it straight. Not quite there yet. Okay, that should be good. So now I can just hit the next two. Come on. All right. So now we can just solder this straight onto the board. Hold it in place for me. So now that we've mounted it, we can just solder up the back side really quick. Now there's a little bit extra or excess um, pin headers on here, so we can just take some tin snips and get rid of those guys, because we don't need them. And there you have it. The uh, power distribution board is all wired up, or uh, hooked up, so now if we give this voltage, um, we're going to get 5 volts out of that port. Okay, so I have a really quick dry fit, just a piece of the frame, to take a peek at um, what my clearances are going to look like. I've decided that I'm going to put the pigtail out the side here, so that, because it will still clear the props here. So they're going to swing there, and the uh, cable is going to come out here, and then when I mount my battery, it'll plug in, you know, like this, instead of out the back. So I'm going to really quick just get a couple, you know, some, some dry fit measurements here. And I'm going to put the, I'm just putting the cable up the side. I'm going to probably give it, you know, about that length of cable. And the props will still swing with plenty of room. Cut these guys up. And now we're ready to solder on our XT60. So I'm just trimming off the ends of this wire here. So I can get at it. There we go. It's going to be nice and long because the XT60 is fairly deep. Do the same thing for the negative wire or the ground. I need to get myself a good wire cutting tool, but knife works just as fine, just fine for now. Um, 
Got an XT60 here. That's the uh, female end. All right, so now with the soldering iron, I'm gonna tin up the uh, ends of the wire here. Just get it nice and covered in solder. Cool. Now I like to use a helping hands for this because both the XT60 and the wires can get pretty hot because you need to hit it with solder for quite a long amount of time. Um, so I'm just hooking it in like this, leaving a little bit of wire exposed like that. And then we can blow a bunch of solder right into that. Assuming it'll get hot. I like to get it good and filled up. And we're good. Now for the other side. Yeah, that's pretty hot in there. Yep. Got a little bit misshapen, so I'm gonna just try to smooth that out so it'll fit on there better. And voila, your own homemade pigtail. Now we'll obviously cover that with heat shrink um, when we're done, but for the most part that's how you do it. And now I've got to strip off a little bit of wire. Okay, we're going to do the same with these ones that we did with the other end, just tin them up. And those are good to go. Now we said we're going to come out the side for the pigtail. So now we got two out the front, two out the back, and then the side is over here. So before I do anything, I'm going to also tin the power distribution board. I'm going to go ahead and just hook this in on both of them. I hate these helping hands. I need something better. And now we can just get it nice and hot and then just blow a bunch of solder right on there. Again, nice and hot. Blow a bunch of solder. Alright, positives on this side. So I'm just going to heat that up. Stick this right on there. It should go on nice and easy. Heat it up. Put it on. Yep. Nice and easy. Okay, so now we have a power distribution board that has a pigtail on it. That will make the uh, distribution board for our copter. Let's go ahead and test this 5 volt regulator while we're at it. If we plug a battery in, there should not be any problems. Okay, no magic smoke. So I've got a battery plugged in on this end, so 12 volts should be coming out of all of those pads, and 5 volts should be coming out of right there. So, with a um, multimeter, take this and quickly check that we're getting 12 volts out of these pads. I guess this battery is a little bit underpowered right now, but that's close enough. And then for 5 volt, go there and there. 5.1, so that's well within the tolerance for a um, Palulu. Okay, I've got these all screwed in. And so now, with those washers in there, there's going to be just enough space between the power distribution board and the carbon fiber that nothing is going to be shorting out. So if you look real closely, you can see that there's just enough space 
between those pin headers down there and the bottom of the board, that the board is nice and low on the table or on the on the platform. So now if I take these guys, which are full, um, they're just open, longer bolts, and screw them down on top of it, like this, I've got my own kind of makeshift standoff that's super secure and is going to make um, the nays stand above it really easily. Now any excess at the end we're going to be able to just trim off with a pair of clippers but there's going to be just about the right amount of space. And I can take the nays, stick it right on top of the mounting plates and there's it's just just the right amount of clearance um, and then at the end when I need to keep the nays on here permanently I've, these <clears throat> nylon nuts just fit on here perfectly and it's not going to go anywhere so now with the nays off I'm going to go ahead and uh, pre-tin the rest of these pads so that when I come back to do my ESCs, they're ready to go. Okay, so I've gone ahead and pre-mounted one of the motors here. I wanted to make sure that um, I got all of the wiring exactly the way I wanted it before I tried to do it on camera. So, we are using the Little B ESCs from Ready to Fly Quads, and I'm using um, DYS Black Edition 1806 2300 kV motors um, that I had already. <clears throat> I am direct soldering the motors to the ESCs, direct soldering the power of the ESC to the power distribution board, and then I'm going to go ahead and use these pin headers to connect everything uh, to the nays at the end. So the first thing that we're going to do is strip back just enough of the heat shrink on this that I can access those soldering pads there. I just cut back the heat shrink just enough um, because I can leave the rest of it on there. I don't need to take it all off. There we go. So I can cut that back, get it out of the way. And so now this whole thing is still heat shrinked, but I can access those uh, pads right there. I usually do um, I usually do it like this because once it's mounted, I still have the ability to change motors really easily or ESCs really easily by just pulling the whole ESC out and resoldering all of these things. Um, it makes it really nice if you're, for example, at a race and you need to swap a motor out because it gets damaged. The next thing I'm going to do is prepare the motor to be soldered onto the um, heat shrink. If I look at this one that I've got over here, I know that I need just about the amount of length of wire that's there. So I'm gonna, you know, put this on here, kinda get a get a rough idea of where I want this to be. Um, it looks like I need to probably cut a little bit off of the motor right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this back just, just a little bit. And now it should be, that should fit nice and well. For each of these, now we need to separate, or to cut back a little bit of the wire. So now we'll have a good amount of wire to solder to. Just twist them up. And I'm just going to kind of fray them out here so I can really quickly tin them up. Perfect. Okay, so at the same time, I'm also going to desolder these lines from the ESC. Um, they probably use a different kind of uh, lead or a lead based solder in the factory when they make these, so sometimes this takes a little bit extra heat to get off. 
Um, this is coming off just fine though. And my heat shrink is getting in the way again. Okay, and now you always want to re uh, tin these pads because you don't know what their solder was. So you just want to make sure you've got some of your own on there. Make sure it's good and ready to receive those motor lines. Okay. So now that ESC is ready to go, the motor is ready to go. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put the motor onto the frame so that everything is solid and in place where I need it to be at the end. So I'm going to mount this first motor on the frame. Um, let's see. I've got one, two um, motor mounting screws. I'm just going to do this first bit by hand to get it all nice and mounted in there. I'm only going to put two screws in for now. I'll put all four in later when I'm getting ready to fly it. Um, but for now, two should work just well. Just keeping it nice and loose so that I can still turn this around and get the other screw in there before I can't maneuver the motor. And I dropped that on the ground. Okay, so now that's good and mounted. Now, for the ESC, one thing that I've started to do is to use a little of this industrial strength Velcro to keep it onto the board. This makes it easy to be able to take it on and off as you need to um, without having to, you know, waste a whole bunch of duct tape or uh, electrical tape or um, zip ties hold it onto the frame and I think it just looks a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to put one piece right here on the arm and I do this with all my models um, which I would show you if they were <clears throat> completely built right now. So I'm just cutting some of this velcro That guy right on there. Now we can move it around if we need to, which we do. All right. So now we should be able to get good to solder this right up. Um, I am planning on using my nays to flash BL Heli to the latest versions of these ESCs. These ESCs have BL Heli bootloader, and the version of the Naze firmware that I'm using, Betaflight, supports the ability to flash them through um, that software. Not all ESCs are BL Heli firmware compatible. They're, they're, they don't necessarily have the BL Heli bootloader, which is what you need to flash through Betaflight. So if you don't have that, then you're going to need to do your ESC flashing before this step, probably. Otherwise, you might not be able to access... Um, the cabling that you need to do, but I'm saving that for later. In addition, if you can't access BL Heli or you're using a Simon KESC, you won't be able to reverse motor direction, which is an important feature in BL Heli. I'm not planning. I'm planning on changing motor direction later um, because I don't because I can do that in the software. You can't do that on all um, uh, ESC firmwares. So now that these are in place and I don't care which direction they're spinning, I'm just going to go ahead and solder these all straight in. And this is easier to do with a pair of tweezers, which I just don't have handy at the moment. So I'm using a pair of massive pliers, which should do the job just as well. The only reason I do this is because those can get a little bit hot while you're working on them, and I want to be right up next to the... Um, brr. 
I want to be right up next to the wire so that I can get it mounted in there. It can be a bit of a pain to do it this way, but I think this is going to give you the best job. And voila. But you want to have nice, clean, um, you know, uh, soldering right there to keep that uh, good and connected. So now the next thing that we're going to do is hook the power lines to the power or to the ESCs up to the power distribution board. Um, I'm going around the inside of this po post. So that's the way I'm gonna. That's just the way I'm gonna do it. You can do it whichever direction you want. Um, I think this is gonna be a little bit cleaner in the long run. So I'm just gonna cut this right at the end. Get this one right about there. Let's strip that back. Strip that back. I'm gonna tin these guys up. Alright, so we're going to start with the ground or the negative or the black wire. Get that guy lamb down on the pad. Good. Now the same for the positive. Come on. Good. Alright, so now we've got the ESC wired in, velcroed up, and the power is connected, so that motor should be good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these, and then we'll continue on. Okay, suddenly this thing's looking a lot more like a quadcopter. Um, we've got all of our motors mounted, soldered up, everything is checked, positive, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, <clears throat> positive, negative. We just want to make sure that there aren't any shorts anywhere on the board that when we power it with the battery for the first time it's going to make everything go poof. So this is going to be the first time that I plug a battery into it and we'll see what happens. Should get dirt dirt dirt. But no arming sound because the maze isn't connected yet. Cool, that seems to work. So the next thing we need to do is wire up our nase. Um, normally, this faces forwards. You got the little arrow there, and this is the front of the craft because that's where we're going to hook up the camera. But, I want all of my ESC wires to come out the back like this, so I'm actually going to intentionally flip the nase all the way around and solder these this angle pin header in facing out the back. That way, in, in clean flight, I can switch that all the way around, so it's not going to be a problem, it's not going to be confused at all, and I have this much nicer way to connect all of these wires here in the back. So the first thing we have to do is hook up these pin headers um, facing out the back of the nays like this. So I'm just going to stick it in here upside down, and I'm going to come in, I'm going to dab just one spot on it to make sure that I've got it angled exactly the way I want it to be. Okay, so now that one thing is holding it in place, and it looks like that's pretty pretty good right angle, so I'm happy with that, so I'm going to just finish off all of these right now. Voila, good and secure. The next thing that we need is a servo lead for the receiver. 
So I'm using the FreeSky D4R-2, and I'm going to use it in PPM mode, which means I need to have just one um, ESC line, or, or servo cable, running from the receiver into the nase. And so I'm going to direct solder th these lines into the 5 volt ground and um, signal channel uh, directly onto the nase so that I can just plug this straight into the uh, um, receiver. I want to double check the length that I'm going to need. I'm probably going to, I'm going to mount my receiver probably right on this part of the back. So I only need, you know, probably about that amount of wire available, probably even less, but I'll give myself some wiggle room. Okay, so now the nase has the, this servo cable ready to go, ready to hook up to the receiver. I can just set it on there and this servo line is going to be able to hook into the receiver which will be back here on this plate somewhere. Okay, the next thing to take care of is that the nase itself needs power and it's going to get power from one of these unused uh, servo ports. The motors, these ESCs are opto ESCs which means they don't have a BEC which means they don't provide 5 volts for me. So instead of um, so we've already put this 5 volt voltage regulator down on the power distribution board and we've got this 5 volt out. So we need to make another servo cable that's going to plug into one of these unused um, ESC ports and that's going to provide the 5 volts that we need. Oops, that's upside down. Like that. So I'm just going to take an extra servo line that I've got here and just totally remove the um, extra signal line. And so now we just have a positive negative um, servo cable. This is probably a little bit long for what we need, so I'm going to trim it back. So it needs to go something like that. So we'll cut it here. I'm just trimming back some of the wire. Okay, that's in there. Okay. Okay, so now we have a 5 volt line that's ready to go to the ESC, or the maze. One last thing that I want to do before I continue is hook up a, um, just a male uh, JST connector um, that I'm going to use to hook up the VTX power system later. Um, I like to have this on a plug so that if I ever have to switch to an immersion RC um, set up for a race, I can just plug it straight into this. That way both my system and the Immersion RC system are compatible to the same um, uh, power lead. So that way I don't have to do any resoldering when I go to an event. <clears throat> I've got a whole video about how that works and why it works that you can check out. So this is just, um, and I, this, I'm just putting it onto one of these uh, ESC lines here. So I've already got this tinned up and ready to go. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Eh, come here. Alright, so that's good to go. So now when I come back and do my FPV system later, all I have to do is plug in this power lead right here. Not backwards. And it's all hooked up and ready to be powered. I want to mark these servo lines so that when I 
come back to plug them in later, I know which one goes where. And I'm just going to do that by scratching into the servo line. I know that the front left, this is the front because that's where the motor is going to plug in. This is going to be four, so I'm just going to do one, two, three, four scratches right in that thing. One, two, one, two, three. So we want one scratch. Now the nase goes from one to five, six this way, so this is where one's going to go. So we look at our scratches and find number one, which is this one. And then we need signal on top, the ground is on the bottom, one, find two, this is two, signal on top, ground on the bottom, three, four, and then I'm going to stick my power in the last one, and that's also going to be ground on the bottom and now we should be good to power this on. And before we lock the nays down, we really want to quick run our VTX line back through to the front. Um, so I've kind of got this mess of wires. I intentionally don't trim them down in case I ever need the extra length and I, then I don't have to solder on a new um, line. It'd probably be better to cut it down, um, but you know, it's kind of, it kind of ends up being up to you. So the VTX line is just sit, going right through like that. I'm just clamping all the wires down with the nays here. Okay, so that's our receiver. This is our VTX cable, which we'll take care of in a minute. And then down here are the VTX power and signal lines. I've got a right angle adapter. I don't. I you you might not need it. Um, I did just because of the length of the cable that I got. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. The next step will be to get out some male Velcro. I'm going to put a piece on the back of this VTX here so that I can still get to the button and see the LEDs on top. I'm going to plug it in. Just like that. And I want to slide it all the way back in here as far as I can. So now we can still get that button there and we can still see the LEDs on the same side and the VTX isn't hanging out the back or anything. And now we can take these nylon screws and lock the nays down into place. Voila. And with the VTX in place, <clears throat> now we can get going with the camera. So I've got kind of an older uh, HS1177 camera that I'm going to put, basically it comes with this bracket that looks a little bit bent up now in mine that will mount right there on that little screw. So what you do is take <clears throat> a M2 and the nut that, or the, yeah, the nut that comes with it. And we're gonna stick this guy through, put the camera mounting on top of it, and then put the uh, nut in there. But I'm gonna struggle to do this on camera, so I'm just gonna do it off camera. Okay, I got the FPV camera mounted up, um, and so now we've already got this line wired up um, from earlier. I just found that the easiest way to plug this in was actually to flip it all the way around so that it's kind of backwards like that and then just plug it in Bing. and then spin it back the way it's supposed to be and uh, oops, I'm gonna get my receiver wire out of there and then this just I kind of have been just kind of mashing it back in here <clears throat> like I said, this should definitely be cleaned up, um, but I like having the extra length um, in case something does break down the road. Um, so yeah, so that's there. I'll probably put a zip tie around that or something just to keep it all 
in place. Okay, next step is to hook up the receiver. Uh, we've already got this line in place. Um, that's backwards. It's going to go on like that. This one is uh, seen a little bit of love. I need to get a new antenna for it, um, but that's just barely long enough. Um, and so what I'm going to do is actually just zip tie it right on top of the, the or not zip tie, but uh, put a little bit of Velcro on top of the naze and just mount it right on there. And it'll be sandwiched between the top plate and the naze. You can take it. And, you know, this is kind of assuming that we're not going to be working much on the naze. Um, and that we've gotten everything in place, um, which I have. Uh, but so now that's going to stay right there, and the antenna is going to come right out the back just the way we want it to. So now we're going to put all of our standoffs back in place. Just stick that through, and then screw it right back down on top. But I don't need to show you that. All right, we've got all of our standoffs in place now. And so we can take the top frame, and we're going to need to quickly. Um, screw in this VTX line, which I should have done before the standoffs. And this is this is the way that I've chosen to do the VTX for this. Um, hopefully, you found a better um, connector type or a cable with a right angle adapter on it. A shorter cable even would have been nice. Um, but this is just what I have to work with right now. So. <clears throat> It will have to do. Alright, so that's back in there. And it actually fits pretty well for what I've got. Um, like that. And that will keep it down and out of the way of the prop. And it will still fit. So I'm going to put one of these on here now just to keep it nice and out of the way. So yeah, so that is that is kind of sticking out the side a little bit, but if we put a prop on here, and this is the wrong prop, there's tons of clearance and it's never going to get in the way. So that's just the way that I've had to do it for this build because of the parts that I have, but I'm sure you'll find a better way to do it. Now, with all those uh, screwed in, we can put our antenna right here on the top. Just a cheapo little antenna. And voila, that is a 100% ready to go multi rotor superstore frogger. Um, let's go ahead and quick test out some electronics. Alright, so we'll go ahead and give it power. I've just got a little three cell bat battery here. You can see that the NASE power is on, the BTX power is on, we can still see all of the LED indicators the way we have it set up. And on the other side we can hit the dip switch and move everything around. The, um, the receiver is also getting power, you can hear my Tyrannus spin up. So <clears throat> if we arm and spin up the motors, you can see everything is working just fine. Um, so now I've also got my goggles here, and now you can see that the quad is getting power. I'll push the goggles in the way of the camera here. So you can see that everything is hooked up, ready to go, just like that. So let's give this a quick garage flight. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of room to work with today because the car is in here and it's raining outside. Um, but I'll just give you a quick demonstration of everything's. Next, we'll get some quick measurements in. <clears throat> this is the copter by its. This is the copter by itself. No battery or anything. We're looking at 281 grams, uh, or 282, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. It's a little bit on the heavy side. We could probably shave some weight down by. Uh, gotten out some of those wires and um, using the appropriate length VTX lines and stuff. Um, this is a 3 cell 1300 milliamp um, and that brings it to if I can see it 385 86 grams which is great um, and this is a 3 cell 1400 milliamp tattoo that keeps that 
437, which is good. Um, yeah, so that's where that ends up. You could probably fly this just fine with the uh, um, 1,000 milliamp um, and probably get a good two and a half, three minutes of flight time going pretty aggressively. Um, so that would probably keep you in the 350 range. Doesn't it's not under uh, FAA certifications, but it's it's good to go. Thank you.